Well, for more on the significance of the referendum, I'm joined by Luis Carlos Batista. He's a Stephen M. Rivers Memorial Fellow at the Center for Democracy in the Americas. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So start by giving us some context. Just how important is this vote to the overall reform efforts? I mean, the, the, this proposal is obviously the jewel of the, of the crown of the process uh, of reform that started with uh, former President Raul Castro in 20, 2006. Uh, and now we have over half a million of, of, of members of the, pro the private sector, uh, entrepreneurs, and obviously the 1976 Constitution didn't have them uh, in, 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 in account. Now, that 1976 referendum, official figures show that it was by a decisive vote, 97.7% yeah. in favor. How much support is there for this current referendum? We have seen in, on Twitter, uh, even in public spaces in, in Cuba, that they, there is a, a debate whether uh, people who want to vote yes and, and people who want to, to vote no. Um, the government has... Uh, kind of has a monopoly of the, the, the public uh, TV, and obviously the campaign for jazz has been overwhelming. Uh, but in, in Twitter, there has been this discussion between people voting yes and people voting, voting no. Um, I will say that uh, the, the, the government knows that they won't be able to achieve again, against, um, again this 98% uh, uh, of, of uh, turnout, uh, turnover. So let's see. Uh, last uh, last December, uh, the, the in the general elections, the turnover was uh, around 82 percent. So probably will be the same in the same amount. So for those who who are, are on the fence or, or are deciding no, what are some of the arguments they're raising as to why, why they oppose the referendum? You have, for example, uh, members of the, of the church, the Christian churches, uh, saying that they are going to vote no because, for example, in the 1976 Constitution, uh, the, the marriage was between one man and one woman, uh, and during the public debate uh, across all the country, the churches were saying we are against the possibility of equal, equal marriage, and the 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 commission that was drafting the Constitution, they had basically a Solomonic. Uh, uh, Answer and, and they said, "Okay, so we're going to say we're going to eliminate uh, this phrase of a marriage between a man and, and a woman, and we will have a referendum in two years to decide if the the, um, the population wants to uh, to have equal marriage or not." Um, basically, what they are saying is we're against this. So essentially, this referendum is is quite encompassing because it's economic, it's political, it's social. Um, but when it comes to the development of Cuba's private businesses, what are they looking for in this referendum? So the current uh, proposal is uh, actually allowing uh, and, and recognizing private property, something that the 1976 wasn't uh, recognizing. And for them, obviously, to have the opportunity to, to own a business, to operate a business, is uh, like every, every private sector wants. Uh, so I, I think it's very important for the process of, of reforms that the private uh, sector is, is having in mind. And having that legal recognition, what does that mean, not just in terms of what it can contribute to Cuba's economy, but, but perhaps making it a more attractive investment uh, opportunity? Absolutely. Uh, the, this uh, proposal also recognizes uh, foreign investment as, as uh, something very important for, for the economy. Um, um, economists have said that, that the country needs around 2.5 2.5% billion dollars uh, every year in foreign investment. So, and obviously economics in Cuba and public officials, they want to promote these foreign investments in, in the country as well. And in terms of reaction, not just from Cubans outside the country, mm -hmm. but the global response to the referendum, what are you seeing? What, what, what I have seen is, for example, the European Union is obs observing what, what is happening in Cuba. Very respectfully, they're, they're observing uh, that. Uh, here in the US, um, Members of Congress like um, Diaz Valar, uh, Congressman of Florida, and Senator Marco Rubio, they have said that, um, or what I have seen is that they are not recognizing this, uh, this constitution. I think that the U.S. government should see the vibrant uh, debate that is happening in, in Cuba and try to engage in that respectfully with a, with a, um, with a respect for U, uh, Cuban sovereignty, but have to engage in that sense, allow investments in, in infrastructure, 
uh, communications, technology, and the way that it could improve the debate that is happening right now, even on Twitter and social media, that kind of stuff. All right, well, thank you for your insight. Thank you. Luis Carlos Batista there, the Stephen M. Rivers Memorial Fellow at the Center for Democracy in the Americas.